सो वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग गुड आफ्टरनून गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स माय नेम इज आयुषी बंसल एंड वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अ पार्ट नंबर टू ऑफ द मैराथन रिविजन सीरीज फॉर द इंटरमीडिएट स्टूडेंट एंड द सब्जेक्ट इज जी एस टी गुड्स एंड सर्विस टेक सो स्टूडेंट्स आई होप यू ऑल हैव वॉच द पार्ट नंबर वन ऑफ आर मैराथन रिविजन सीरीज इफ यू हैव नॉट वॉच इट येट सो आई विल डेफिनेटली सजेस्ट यू प्लीज वॉच इट आफ्टर द कम्पलीशन ऑफ दिस सेशन यू विल गेट द लिंक ऑफ previous session that is a part number 1 of the marathon series in the description given below okay so now let's start with the topic gsps or asp now what do you mean by gsp or asp actually what is happening there you all know that there is a network which is known as gstn what is the name of that network gstn so gstn is basically a goods and service tax network GSTN the full form of GSTN is yes they can ask you in the multiple choice question the full form of GSTN is goods and service tax network goods and service tax network so basically goods and service tax network is a company which is managing the complete GST portal yes they are managing the complete GST portal but when they are managing it they require so many facilities they require so many facilities so many access on the gst portal so that every user can easily use it for example this gstn uh, they have managed some uh, they have managed even some functions which users can use for example they can apply for the registration then the government can approve for the registration they can file their returns to the gst website to the common portal so how they are managing it completely by themselves they have selected some gsps which they have selected they have selected some gsps just gsps are known as goods and service goods and service tax सुविधा so providers yes this g stands for goods and service tax company and it is suvidha providers so goods and service tax suvidha providers now ma'am what are the function of this gsp that is the goods and service tax provider suvidha provider so this uh, so student basically what they are doing is they are they have enabled this gsp is actually a combination of three or more some parties those three and more some parties are first of all the gstn has selected some information technology that we are going to use this information technology in the common portal on the common portal so they have selected certain information technology second some it enabled services third they selected some financial technology companies now the combination of all these three what is the combination now the combination of the very first thing is uh it that is information technology plus it enabled services plus some financial technology companies combination the collaboratively these all are known as the gsp means goods and service tax suvidha so providers okay now further what they have done is that is gsp they have to develop some applications applications for what applications to make the function easy for the users and the users of this common portal is obviously government also we also as a common man as a taxpayer uh, bankers management everyone okay so they are required to develop some applications now for developing these applications or i can say to develop a link with the users they have selected some asps this gsps are now selected some asps which are known as application suvidha provider application suvidha provider so if i summarized it gstn has selected some gsps to make the work easy then this gsp select some asp which are known as application suvidha providers basically the function of this asp is to develop a link between to do a, to integrate the link between the gsps and the users okay so i hope this point is clear to you now a uh, student as you all know this is a only a revision session so if you are having any doubt you can ask me in the comment section okay so this is basically i have uh, i have taken these class in the 100% english language so that each and every student can complete their syllabus on time can revise their syllabus on time okay yes now the next point is so i hope now it is clear that what are uh, that who are gsps and who are asps okay so the next part here is compensation cells now what do you mean by compensation cells so uh, let's see what happened so students when gst introduced in our india some state said some state said that is the state uh, state government said that 
we are facing so many losses because now there are not so many taxes there is only a single tax it means if a person is providing service there is a gst only now if a person is supplying uh, goods there is also a gst there is no uh, cascading of taxes so it means persons are now paying lower taxes than earlier regime so in some states they imply gst compensation cess this gst compensation cess is basically implied is basically availed by the state governments in some states to compensate the loss faced by them now so ma'am it means every uh, now if this is the case that they have to compensate their loss every state government will impose this no this is not happening actually what is going to be happen on the hazardous harmful and the luxurious products or i can say the demerit goods some state governments have the opportunity so that they can apply the gst compensation cess okay yes okay so the next point here is students i am again telling you if you are getting any confusion in any topic of gst or in uh, tt that is in income tax please please feel free to contact me any time okay in the youtube comment section also yes so now the next point is a gst compensation cess has been imposed under the gst compensation to state cess act 2017 on the specified luxury items as i have told you or the demerit goods now what do you mean by demerit goods so demerit goods are those goods which are harmful for anyone okay for example pan masala tobacco aerated waters now what do you mean by aerated waters so aerated water means the water which contains some soda component okay it means when we open that bottle it will uh, it will give a sound of fizz okay yes motor cars uh, etc now ma'am is motor car a demerit good no but motor car is a luxurious good it is not a uh, basic necessity of everyone okay so next is now the next important point or i can say a question which surely will come into examination either in the subjective section or in the objective section yes it is actually important for all the level of examination uh, if i say for ca intermediate for cma intermediate or for any sub or for cs executive also okay so let's understand this now what it is saying it is saying that gst we know it on every goods and services now there is a single tax which is known as gst goods and service tax but still there are some goods and services on which gst is not going to be applied it means gst is levied on all goods and services but except some parts of goods now now what are those goods which are those goods now you know uh, i think you will get an idea that what i am trying to say that this question is surely coming to examination so you have to give your 100% while revising this topic okay yes today so the very first part the very first good i can say on which there is no gst yes there is no completely gst till yet is alcoholic liquid for human consumption now the next point is ma'am is the alcoholic liquid for human consumption it means it is tax free no students it is not tax free what state government what central government has do is they said that the alcoholic liquid for human consumption is outside the realm of gst it means till now it is decided that never on this particular goods that is alcoholic liquid for human consumption there will be no gst in future also so on uh, so which tax is going to be applied on the alcoholic liquid for human consumption so student it is under the preview of it is under the purview of previous uh, indirect taxation regime it means when it will be say when it will be manufactured there shall be state excise duty as we all know that in the previous indirect taxation regime as we have covered in the class also in the regular sessions also in the previous indirect taxation regime when anything is manufactured there as a there was a tax which is known as excise duty now excise duty was of two kinds central excise duty and state excise duty so on alcoholic liquid for human consumption on the manufacturing of it there shall be state excise duty plus when it will be supplied to any other person so if it is a case of intra state supply so there shall be vat or if it is a case of inter state supply so there shall be cst that is central sales tax okay now ma'am is there any memory trick or is there any logic that there is a state excise duty uh, not the central excise duty yes students that is why the reason that in some states alcohol is banned and in some states alcohol is allowed because it is under the uh, it is under the hand it is in the hands of the state government only okay so the second product on which there is no gst till yet which we are seeing in our daily life so many times which is that product that is a petrol so 
uh, we can say that it is one of the biggest reason that the rate of the petrol is so high even now now what is the reason for that because till now till today on petroleum crude diesel petrol etf uh, atf natural gas there is no gst it means there will be no gst in the future also no if i will talk about the practical part so students in our practical life on the daily basis there are so many meetings of government uh, government is conducting so many meetings so that they can they can uh, they can bring the petrol under the purview of gst but till now uh, they have not bring that part into gst but yes for sure in future you will see that the petroleum is in under the realm of gst okay so on if we talk about the today so which tax is going to be applied on the petrol so students on today if i talk about today so on the manufacture of on the manufacturing of petroleum crude that is raw petrol uh, diesel petrol atf means aviation turbine fuel aviation turbine fuel means which is fuel in which is refilled in the aeroplanes flights and all and the natural gas till now uh, there is no gst on the manufacture of this petroleum crude and all central excise duty shall be levied which duty shall be levied central excise duty shall be levied not the state excise this is the central excise duty please keep it in your mind because as i already told you this question is going to be come into examination and yes one more thing very important if you have not liked the video yet so please like it because it will act like a motivation for me and i will make more and more videos for all of you okay so if you like this video please like it and uh, press the bell icon and here yes, subscribe my channel too okay so central excise duty plus when it will be supply to any other person if it is a case of interstate supply so a uh, cst shall be there that is central sale tax but if it is a case of intra sale uh, intra state supply so vat shall be there okay so what are which are the two products which we have covered yet alcoholic liquid for human consumption now students please keep into your mind i am repeating again and again it is alcoholic liquid for human consumption only okay not the all parts of the alcohol second is uh, which part petroleum uh, the petrol part that is a petroleum crude petrol aviation turbine fuel motor spirit and all okay now the next point is tobacco it means on tobacco there is no gst but actually this is not the case now tell me one thing is tobacco good for health or bad ma'am bad so what they have done is on tobacco they have imposed a double taxation system now see what they have done students we all know that if gst is going to be applied then no other tax will be levied on any product but on tobacco when tobacco will be manufactured when tobacco will be manufactured there shall be excise duty which excise duty so central excise duty central excise duty but when it will be supplied to any other person there shall be gst okay so this is the only case where there shall be two taxes it means on the manufacture there shall be central excise duty but on the supply there shall be gst okay yes next is opium indian hemp and other narcotic drugs and narcotics as we all know narcotics is very 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 demanded very hazardous yes, very harmful for our health so what they have done is they have also said now impose the double taxation on this part too how so they said that on the manufacture of the opium indian hemp and other narcotic drugs and narcotics that are the kind of narcotics so uh, it will be on the manufacturing of it there shall be state excise duty but when it will be supplied to any other person so there shall be gst okay yes so similarly like tobacco but please keep it in your mind that on the tobacco there shall be central excise duty but on the opm indian hemp and other narcotic drugs and narcotics there shall be state excise duty now a very important thing ma'am is the drugs and narcotic drugs are safe no students sometimes we refer drugs as only medicines we commonly known the medicine as drugs also so narcotic drugs is Uh, uh, different from the normal drugs. ठीक है? Normal drugs we can say that is medicine though also. It means sometimes in the some states they called as uh, medicines as drugs. So narcotic drugs is harmful. If they are uh, if they are talking about those medicinal parts, so that is different. Okay. La last but not the least part of this particular topic is real estate sector. But why real estate sector is outside the purview of gst so actually there is a simple case of it there is actually a logic of it students gst shall be levied on every supply of goods or services but what do you mean by goods actually the goods means any kind of movable property it means 
immovable property will not be covered in goods and it is very much evident so it means uh, the immovable property real estate sector means sale or purchase of immovable property sale or purchase of land or building now you can't do that you are uh, driving through a road and a building come into uh, between other road you are very much uh, you are very much irritated because uh, because every side there is traffic now can you move that building to any other place no we can't do that actually so it means it is an immovable property so students on the sale of building or land there shall be no gst why because it is not a goods and obviously it is not a services also okay so i hope all this part is clear to you now please students if you like this video so uh, like this video share it with your friends and comment on the video that you are liking it okay and yes subscribe my channel and press the bell icon now one more important thing if you want to join the batches for the may or june 2023 that is for the ca or cma intermediate or cs executive or if you want to join our classes for the november or december batch so please contact us at the given numbers okay yes there shall be live batch also as the, as well as there shall be recorded batches also which are going to be soon uh, which are going to be introduced in the october part okay and students yes in september uh there shall be very heavy discounts on our classes because this is a best of season okay yes next ma'am you are saying that if gst is going to be imposed so no other taxes shall be levied so which are the taxes which are subsumed in gst so student in gst two kind of taxes have been subsumed first of all central level taxes second is state level taxes not uh, let's talk about it in the case of central level taxes that are the central taxes for example central excise duty additional excise duty service tax service tax is levied by, was levied by the central government so central taxes excise duty under medicinal and toilet preparation act cbd now ma'am what do you mean by cbd so as we have discussed in the custom part in our class the cbd means countervailing duty and special countervailing duty okay next is cst cst was levied on the supply of any product but now there is no cst okay other are central surcharges which are also uh, now abolished now students every kind of central taxes have also imposed on the state level for example as uh, on the central level there were central surcharges but on the state level there was not as there was state surcharges there was entertainment tax tax on lottery entry tax or we can say the purchase tax what uh, which was levied on the intrastate supply of any product luxury tax all these taxes have been abolished okay next is so it means they have said the alcoholic liquid for human consumption it is outside the purview of gst till yet the five petroleum product they will come under the purview of gst but as of now they are not under the gst okay so gst council will decide the date from which gst will be applicable now there is one very 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 important thing who is gst council so students i will say one thing for the gst council if government is going to take any decision regarding gst they will for sure take the recommendation of the gst council okay so it is like i can say that it is like a potato or tomato of a vegetable which you can put in every vegetable it means you can put in every question of gst mostly that government will do this on the recommendation of the gst council yes okay so as we have studied uh, now the tobacco there shall be double taxation on entertainment tax power to tax remains with the local body it means entertainment tax has not not been abolished okay next up what are the benefits of gst so for the benefits of gst na this benefit criteria is divided into certain parts the first is the benefit which is arise to the economy which has arise to our economy second is benefit which has arise to the uh, simplified tax structure so it means to simplify the tax structure of a country third uh, the uh, just wait student the second one is that is the advantages which is going to be for the trade and industry then for the normal public so now let discuss it one by one okay the very first part here is that what are the benefits of gst to our economy now as the gst has been introduced into the market you know what have been done that there is only a single tax in most of the supplies in almost every supply except some uh, particular cases it means now there is creation of unified national market actually what were happening before now uh, that uh, there was a case of state excise duty now every state is going to be imposed different different kind of taxes different different kind of state excise duty on the product 
for this particular purpose consequence to this purpose the price of product is varying between the different state but now as there is only a single gst and the gst rates are applied simultaneously to the complete india so there is a creation of unified national market because now there is no economic barrier on this part okay the second part is due to this due to the benefits of the uh, due to the gst what are government wants our government has started an initiative to make in india initiative due to the gst the make in india initiative has uh, has given a boost how because students actually what is happening now as the gst has come there is no economic barrier due to this what is happening that our indian market is becoming competitive in the national as well as in the international market so that's why now the india has become a manufacturing hub this is very much evident now we can see that many foreign companies are creating are opening their manufacturing hubs in our india also okay next is enhanced investment and employment so how it is going to be happened at enhanced investment and employment so students what will happen suppose manufacturing is going to be boosted okay so it means different companies are coming into india investment will going into boost now if we are manufacturing in a large part we will also do the export now if we do the export so more and more employment will be there okay next is how it is come, uh, that how gst makes our tax structure simplified because now there is a ease of doing business ma'am how there is a ease of doing business uh, suppose you are a businessman you are an entrepreneur previously you have to make so many you have to pay so many taxes uh, you have to pay service tax you have to pay vat you have to pay cst you have to pay excise due to it become which makes our business so complicated but now this uniformity in laws procedure because only there is one single tax that is gst second there is certainty in tax administration but now how because students now there is a common system of classification of goods uh, for the goods there is a common system of classification that is hsn for the services there is common system of classification that is the service code okay which because, which creates certainty in the tax administration okay so i hope students you will do this uh, part of benefits if we will do the part of benefits in the revision class so i hope there so i think it will be a time wastage for you okay because as we have covered the components of gst now you can simply do the benefits of gst if you get any query any doubt in the part of the benefits of gst please do comment in the comment section i will explain you in the next part okay so let's wind up this chapter i think now there is no part which you can't uh, do yes there is an important question also which is seven schedule to article 246 okay now ma'am uh, what is the students dekh there are 99 percent chances that this question will come either in dt or in idd yes this can also be coming to idd uh let's start this question do you know which is the supreme law of india it means which is a law which cannot abide by any one so that is our article uh, that is our indian constitution yes that is our constitution of india that is indian constitution okay jai hind jai hind jai bharat so so that is our indian constitution now so ma'am uh we think that supreme court is the supreme law of the india student supreme court is not the supreme law of india it is only an authority okay indian constitution is the supreme law of india it means everything has mentioned into the uh, indian constitution time by time it got amended as per the uh, necessity okay so in our indian constitution there are different different articles which explains about the different law there is an article number 246 which article article number 246 as i have already told you this question is going to come into examination so can you can you uh, do a mistake to not learn the article number no you can't do this because you are very smart okay so let's do it. article number 246 so in the indian constitution in the indian constitution there is an article 246 which have a seventh schedule okay in that seventh schedule it it uh, enumerates it is mentioned that which uh, which authority have to make law for the particular part it means they specify that union government it is the central government have the authority to make such laws state government have the authority to make such laws otherwise there will be a complete chaos okay so in the indian constitution in our indian constitution as i have told you that is the supreme law of india there is an article 246 which article article 246 
in article 246 there are so many schedules there is one schedule which is known as seventh schedule yes you have to learn these numbers seventh schedule in seventh schedule there are three list list 1 list 2 and list 3 so students in this particular list that is in list 1 all those matters have been enumerated on which the parliament or we can say union government central government has the exclusive power it means only they have the power to make laws on such matters if i tell you now so our income tax income tax has been mentioned in this list that's why the central government has the exclusive power to make laws on the part of income tax okay now the next is list number 2 in list number 2 it is known as state list what is it known as state list in state list all those matters have been enumerated have been mentioned which have the power which state government have the exclusive power to make laws on that now what is this list 3 in the list 3 this is concurrent list what it is known as concurrent list so in concurrent list they uh, they contains the matters in respect of which central government as well as state government both have the power to make laws on it okay student so i hope uh, now you got to understand this also so students with this we have completed our chapter number 1 if you got any query any doubt in any particular part please let me know in the comment section okay so now let's start with the chapter number 2 yes this chapter number 2 is going to be very interesting because from this you are actually going to learn that uh, on which supplier there shall be gst on which supplier there shall be no gst and all okay so are you are you guys ready to start it let's start it one more important thing as i have told you that uh, uh, sessions that are the patches for the may or june or for the november and uh, december 2023 are going to be started in the september and october so student these will be the live batches as well as shall be the recorded batch also if you join the live batch recording shall be completely free for all of you okay yes uh, now ma'am is this batch shall be only in the english language or there shall be mixture language also yes for sure it will be in the both languages that is in the english language as well as in the english language that is the mixture of hindi and english okay let's start it so next chapter is supply under gst now what do you mean by supply under gst it means that which supplies shall be covered under the gst but what does it mean suppose students i have this mobile and i have a friend with uh, sitting beside me i am giving i am supplying this mobile to my friend so uh, am i required to charge gst with my friend no ma'am you are not required you are, because you are just giving a gift but student which is gift in our eyes which is gift in our perspective maybe it will be a supply in the perspective of gst so what should we do so what we are going to do is we are going to understand that which supplies shall be covered under gst okay so so to not create any confusion there are there are just wait there are particular three parameters there are particular three basic parameters of supply which are going to be covered under gst now what are those parameters it means if those parameters will be satisfied the supply shall be known as supply under gst otherwise it shall not be covered under the supply under gst now uh, many of you are thinking ma'am but in the class you have mentioned the six parameters so students i have told you three are the basic parameters three are the additional parameters first of all we will cover the basic parameters then we will cover the additional parameters okay so what are those uh, basic parameters the very first parameter is that supply should be of goods or services it means but it is very clear now if this is a gst goods and service tax so for sure supply should be made of goods or services now is there anything which is neither a goods nor a services yes for example immovable property for example money for example securities we already have covered it in our regular session now i hope you remind all yes so supply should be made of what parts either goods or services or both okay so if there is no goods or services in the particular supply it shall not be covered under the gst second is okay but if i am talking about a goods this is a good na this is a mobile i am supplying it to my friend now why i am not charging gst the second parameter is that supply must be made for a consideration okay as i am giving it to free i am giving it uh, i am giving it in free to my friend so there shall be no gst supply should be made for a consideration should be made for a 
consideration consideration means something return of something so consideration can either be in the monetary terms or in any other term for example in barter system but it must be there okay supply should be made for a consideration yes supply should be made for a consideration yes okay now but ma'am now what is the third parameter okay if this is a partner i am actually what happened is that i was uh, i have gone to a market i have seen there a very nice pen i am suppose i am in, i am sitting on the class 12 bench now i am giving that mobile to my friend and taking the 10 rupees that is the cost of that mobile now if i am required to charge gst no ma'am there is no requirement because you just purchase it and give it to your friend so now what now why i am not charging gst because there is a third parameter which specifies supply must be made the third parameter is supply must be made in the course of furtherance of business course of business means it is in the ordinary activities of business furtherance of business means to proceed the business okay the third parameter is supply must be made must be made in the course or furtherance of business course or furtherance of business okay yes so i hope you all understand it now yes ma'am okay uh, so now student this is a revisionary session if you want to join the regular session please contact us at the given numbers okay i'm trying my level best uh, that to revise the complete syllabus but yes student this is a revisionary session i'm repeating again and again you have to do questions also okay so please do it and if you got any kind of confusion do contact me now student now the next part is okay so these three are the basic parameters if means if these three parameters are going to be covered in any part so that shall be a supply yes student that shall be a supply but as everything has exceptions now so this particular part have also has exceptions it means please listen it very carefully it means now uh, there are three parameters okay so if but the first parameter that is supply should be made of goods or services it can't bear any exception it means if there is neither goods nor services never ever there shall be gst because the name of the tax is gst goods and services tax so it must be there it means there is no exception of the parameter one no exception yes but for other two parts that is uh, it should be made for the consideration or it should be made in the course or furtherance of business there are some exceptions okay and those exceptions are very 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 much important for your intermediate examination as well as for your final examination okay so let's start it so students as i have told you from these three parameters the first parameter we can't bear any kind of exception but yes in the second or third parameter there can be some exceptions also okay so let's start with those exceptions so the very first thing is now the part is just wait okay yes so the thing is ma'am what are the exceptions for the consideration it means that there must be a consideration if uh, the consideration shall not be there even in that case it must be, it can be called a supply so students for this exception these exceptions are mentioned in the schedule 1 schedule 1 of cgst act 2017 and i will suggest you one more thing also what is that ma'am after covering this session that is the schedule 1 of cgst act 2017 so students try to try to attempt for the mcqs also okay there are some free mcqs which i have posted on my app you can install my app from the description link given the link is given in the description below you can find it out on the play store also that is the ayushi bansal classes you will find a particular part of the free content free study material there i have uploaded a test for you so many tests are uploaded there for the gst part you can opt that they all are the mcqs you just have to click 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 okay yes but if you want to join the mcq series you want to uh, attempt so many mcqs for your even for the november or december examination coming 2022 examination so you can join our mcq series test ma'am how much it cost it is actually negligible cost that is rupees 149 only 149 only okay yes actually this is uh, i have charged this fees so that you will make a commitment to yourself okay i have paid 149 but you know this is only and only just a commitment please not me okay only okay i will mention it otherwise you will think ma'am is it possible yes it is possible 
rupees one for a nine only. Okay, yes, you can join that. Now, so for the particular part that is the consideration, what are the exceptions which will be accepted in the part of the consideration? So, student, it is mentioned in the schedule number one. Which schedule? Schedule number one of the CGST Act 2017. Let's start with it. Okay. So the very first part in schedule number one, there are four paragraphs which will be covered. Okay. Yes. Let's start it. Just wait. I will uh, show you. Okay. So as I have said, you uh, there is schedule one under the. Okay. Ma'am, it is only the schedule one which we have to uh, write in the examination. No. So actually, section seven, subsection one, clause C of CGST Act 2017. What I have told you, read with the schedule number one of CGST Act 2017. The very first important thing whenever you will write about this schedule that is a schedule 1 schedule 2 schedule 3 so the number shall be in the roman number it means this shall be the schedule 1 okay it shall not be like this it will uh, deduct mark, marks off okay so always mention it in the roman number of the pgst yes. so the very first schedule is schedule number one yes okay ma'am the Roman number will be in the sections also, no students, only and only in the case of schedules, not in the case of uh, sections. Okay, please keep it in your mind. The very first paragraph is permanent transfer or disposal of business assets. What does it mean? Now let's revise it. So in the case of permanent transfer or disposal of business assets, I have already told you that if any person is going to transfer any kind of business asset, any kind of business asset means any asset which is related to the business On the in the case of in the scenario of permanent transfer it means they have not any intention to take it back so in that case if it is a case of permanent transfer plus there is no consideration charge and the icing on the cake is that the person have already availed the ITC input tax credit by when they have purchased this asset so in that case even there is no consideration but even in that case, if other two parameters are going to be satisfied, that it is either goods or services, or it is in the made in the course or furtherance of business, so there shall be GST. GST shall be levied there. Okay, GST shall be levied there. Okay, this is the crux of the para number one. Now, what do you mean by para number two? So, students, in the case of para number two, they said that in the case of para two of Schedule one of CGST Act 2017, let's revising as i have told you so i hope uh, you have revised the part of para number one yes now the case of para number two is that if the supply is made between the related person or the distinct person now this is the main part who are the related person or distinct person but why they are doing this okay first part the person have taken the itc that's why they have imposed this rule then why in this part because today in the case of related person or distinct person we uh, they have, an, uh, they have a chance to influence us or we have a chance to influence them. So we can make that excellence and that's why they impose this particular provision. Okay. So what in this case of schedule number two, in schedule two, they said that if the supply is made, this is the para number. Okay. Yes. So if the supply is made between the related persons or distinct persons, so there shall, even if there is no consideration, there shall be GST. Now, who are the related person? In the related person, two kind of persons will be covered. First, the family. And the second is legal person. Some legal persons which have the power to influence you, they shall be covered in the case of related. For example, we have covered the, uh, we have covered the directors of one another's business, partners of one another's business, that all the cases. Okay. So, legal persons. Okay. Just do a simple reading of the legal person. If you got any confusion, please ask me. Next is the family. Now we know now. We know our family. No student, just wait. Okay. In the case of family here, who shall be covered? This is very important to understand. Okay. Many students, so many students have to seen that they have the confusion in this part. Suppose there is an individual known as Chintamani. Yes, Chintamani has also come into our in our YouTube classes. So just give an applause to Chintamani. Okay. So now student, this Chintamani the grandparents of the Chintamani please understand it very carefully or make it chat anywhere in your book also okay grandparents parents or brother sister yes this is family and the fourth one is spouse that is life partner or the children they will cover here but 
a main dilemma here is that why i have why have done this thing that i have uh, made two uh, kind of uh, tables here two kind of charts here the very first in the cover grandparents parents and brother sister second in the spouse and children there is a logic behind it for grandparents parents and brother sister they will be known as family they will be known as related person of chintamani only and only in the case of gst if they are wholly or mainly if they are wholly or mainly financially dependent on the chintamani okay so if they are wholly wholly mean the completely or the mainly financially dependent means maximum they are dependent on the chintamani as a financial not emotional okay so they will be known as family for this particular purpose but this scenario is not in the case of spouse or children it means if spouse and children either they are financially dependent on chintamani or not they will be known as family of the chintamani okay yes so i hope now you know the meaning of the uh, family persons as well as the legal persons legal persons are those all persons for example if one person is a uh, if one person has a shares of more than a particular specified amount which we have already covered in uh, two or more companies so all those companies shall be the legal person related person all that part okay next is ma'am okay now we know the related part yes related person but what is mean by distinct persons so let's understand it ma'am should i uh, should i require to change my notes no student there's no requirement you have your examination now so you can use any book you uh, the, uh, understand one thing in each and every book provision will be same there is no such kind of provision that in the book a you will get the provision of gst as a different provision and in the book b there shall be different provision of gst so in every each and every book provision shall be same just there is a need to understand these provisions okay and we are understanding we are revising these provisions now now who are the distinct persons so student in gst there is a law which is known as the gst is a pan based law gst is always pan based what does it mean it means a person can only take the gst on the basis of permanent account number if the person is a resident of india okay now there is an important thing but gst is actually a pan based but it is state wise registration pan based state wise registration it means if i am going it means if i am going to take registration from haryana yes i am from haryana uh, plus i am taking i am going to take registration from punjab i am doing business from uttar pradesh also so can i take the Uh, can I take single GST registration for the complete India? No, we can't do that. We have to take registration for each and every state from where we are going to do business. Understand it? From where? Not where. It means this is not the case that I am supplying in UP. It means I have to take registration from UP. No. If I am doing business from UP, so I have to take registration there. Okay. So in this particular scenario, students, I have to take three registrations: first in Haryana, second in Punjab, and third in UP. but in all these three cases gst shall be different that is gst identification number but my pan shall be same na so for all these parts where i have registered with the same permanent account number it shall i am i shall be known as distinct person okay so it means if i am supplying from haryana from uh, from my haryana branch to my punjab branch okay in completely free of cost even if it is completely free of cost but it is supply of goods or services it is made in the course of furtherance of the there shall be no consideration so tara to schedule the bunch of cgst act 2017 shall be covered here and they will said yes it will be considered as supply and you have to charge gst on it okay yes now the very first part is distinct person and the second part is establishment of distinct person ma'am these are the same things now no these is not the same thing distinct person means from where you have taken the registration for each such registration they shall be known as distinct person but in the case of establishment of distinct person establishment of distinct person it means that from where you have uh, from where you have given the you are conducting a business on the same permanent account number either they have registered or not it means if i have not registered in a Uh, for example if i am not registered in punjab because i am supplying petrol from there as petrol is not outside the purview of gst so i am not required to take gst registration even in that case it shall be known as establishment of distinct person okay so in both the cases there shall be gst even if there is no consideration this is the para number 2 now 
what is the para 3 of schedule 1 so let's understand it now students the para 3 of schedule 1 specifies the principal agent relationship what it specifies the principal agent relationship they said that if there is a particular principal agent relationship between two person so there it will not be considered as it will be considered as supply even if there is no uh, consideration um, what does it mean why they have covered it here so let's understand it what actually happening is there okay all students please please understand it very carefully because i have seen those students who have not joined our classes or they are doing the self study or uh, they have some confusion in this part okay so please understand it very carefully because yes it is important for examination also I will explain you it with the help of an example. So there are three persons. Okay, Mr. A, Mr. B, and Mr. C. Actually, Mr. A is a principal who have appointed an agent. Who have appointed an agent, Mr. B. Okay, so this person is the agent. Now, principal has said to the agent, agent, listen me very carefully. I have hundred pieces of TV. I want to sell it in the market. So please let's uh, let's just uh, let's just bring a customer for me, or let's just uh, do no. Let's search for uh, search for a customer for me. Okay. Now agent is going to the market. They have searched so many prospective customers and decide to sell it to Mr. C. Now agent tells me principal principal, please send all those TVs to me. I will sell it to. Uh, Mr. C that is the customer I have searched for now if you are in the place of agent please tell me in the comment section please uh, let me know okay yes please comment so that I got to know that you are interacting with me you are actually uh, you are actually very interested in this series so that I can continue this series okay so if you are in the place of Mr. Agent on whose name you will uh, you will uh, you will form the tax invoice obviously ma'am in the name of principal because principal is the actual seller but in this case what if we didn't have it going there that this agent this particular agent have made have formed the invoice on his own name yes that is in the name of agent only and said okay no problem now i will take the consideration and pay it back to the principal in your eyes in your in the common eyes okay ma'am there is no problem now but there is a problem it means actually what was happening there this is not a principal this is a seller okay and this person was a buyer now the, he actually again sell it to any other customer but to evade the tax between these two persons they consider them as principal or agent so that's why they said that if there is a principal agent relationship they are saying it as principal agent relationship but if the invoice is in the name of the agent only so there shall be if there shall be a case of para 3 schedule 1 which shall we state that in this particular case students please try to understand in this particular case there is no consideration when principal supplied the tv pieces to agent agent does not pay back any kind of consideration but even if principal not uh, agent has not paid any kind of consideration even in that case gst shall be limited okay because now you know the understand the complete case now let's understand this yes, it is very important for examination okay so it means the main criteria main deciding factor here is the invoice that on whose name invoice has been made, uh, invoice have been created okay now let's understand one thing which is very important that only supply of goods is covered is going to be covered here not supply of services supply of services shall not be covered here it means if if this is a case same case of principal agent but there are no goods there are supplying of services so this provision is not going to be happen it means if there is a consideration there shall be gst otherwise not okay yes. so the main deciding factor is your invoice only the same case in the case of Dell Creator Agent, if Dell Creator Agent is there, so you know one thing that if it is a case of Dell Creator Agent, so it means it is a selling agent only. In the simple case, it can either be selling agent or buying agent because agents can be of both types. But if it is a case of Dell Creator Agent, now, so in the part number one, we understand what is there. So, uh, in the uh, sorry, not in the part number one, but already in our previous article, in our previous post videos, you know, Dell Creator Agent is that agent who tries to reduce, who uh, said to the principal, okay principal, just increase my commission, I will, if in the future there shall be any kind of bad debt, so I will bear it, okay. So in this particular part, DCA that is Dell Creator Agent shall only be a selling agent, not a buying agent, okay. 
yes we have covered it in regular sessions also so i hope now this point is clear to you now there is last but not the least part of today's session also that is the para number 4 of schedule 1 okay the student in this para number 4 of schedule 1 they said that if there is an importation of services importation of services yes not the case of importation of goods this is a case of importation of services it means if you are going if you are going to import the services import the services means if you are receiving the services from outside india if you are receiving the services from outside india it is in the course or furtherance of business it is in the course or furtherance of business so even if there is no consideration even if there is no consideration there shall be gst yes because but ma'am why they have done this because student if this is a case of importation of goods so custom shall handle it so there is no case of importation of goods here but yes if it is a case of importation of services when we are going to import something we are going to pay our consideration our inr our indian rupee in a foreign country so they said if you are going to pay the our indian rupee to the foreign country now we will bring back you to this provision okay but yes there is a very very important deciding factor here that you should you in fact you must import the services it means you are taking the services from a related person only okay so it means if this is a non related person so there shall be no kind of provision here if it means if this is a case of non related person so gst shall be levied only in the case of importation of services if it is a case of consideration but if it is without consideration and you are taking it from a related person or from your establishments which are located outside india that is the influence part so gst shall be levied even if there is no uh, no consideration okay so students i hope you enjoy the today's session if you like the today's session please like it comment on my session and share it with your friends and yes subscribe to my channel also okay so thank you and have a nice day and meet me in the next session that is the part number 3 in which we are going to cover the chapter number 2 which we are going to revise the entire chapter 2 that is supply and agility thank you and have a nice day